Hey friend, in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to paint a wildflower field, wildflower field in watercolor. And I'm going to be using a unique tool. I've never done it this way uh, with this tool. So I wasn't really sure how it was gonna turn out. So if you're curious, stay till the end and see how it turns out. But I'm gonna show you depth of field, how to create a blurry effect for the background flowers, and then up close foreground flowers, we're gonna be painting bigger ones, more detailed ones. So if you're ready, let's dive in. All right, so we, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to paint a watercolor wild flower field. And the perspective I'm gonna take is like we're walking right through it. We have some up close flowers here. Um, but we want to think about how our eye views things. If we're looking at it straight on, if we have a little bit of an upwards perspective, our eye isn't flat, it's rounded. It's a, a, literally a ball. If we're like pop to pop our eyeballs out, it'd be a ball. And so think of like, if you're taking a photo on a professional camera and you had a fisheye lens, it's not going to be so fisheye, but just, um, adding water for the sky. I'm grabbing my size 16 brush. And instead of just doing sky straight across and then flowers, I'm gonna have the sky kind of come to a, a curve at the bottom to give it that swooping, sweeping effect um, with the sky and also kind of a more uh, realistic look to how it would look if you were walking through the field. So I'm just laying water down with my biggest brush. If you have a bigger brush on hand, obviously that would work because I'm covering the entire sheet of paper. I don't actually need to swoop just yet because I'm gonna do the grass color down here too so it's a little bit blurry and then we're gonna add flowers on top for the detail. <clears throat> but a bigger brush will work. Just grabbing a lot of water, going very quickly because I don't want this water to dry before I start plugging in my pigment. And I've got a toothbrush on hand and some alcohol. If you don't have these tools, that's totally fine. But I just wanted to try something a little different. It's always good to be switching things up, trying new things that are definitely out of your wheelhouse. It's not super complicated or anything. It's just a something I've never tried is adding alcohol sprays of alcohol to a floral painting. And I think it could look pretty cool. So let's see if it's actually executing how I'm seeing it in my mind. So I've got water all down on the entire sheet of paper. I'm gonna grab cobalt blue on my brush and just a touch of it. Um, and we're gonna start swooping. I'm kind of just dancing on top of the paper and adding in touches of blue and spreading it. I want this to be like a kind of a sunny day, but there's some clouds in the sky. It's a spring day. It's kind of a light cobalt all the way through, but then just here and there, I'm gonna punch in some darker blue, but I'm just going in zigzags across the sky till about here. I might go back over some at the top to bring that forward a little bit more like so, and maybe grab some opera rose and just lightly dust that in here and there. There we go. Nothing complicated about the sky. I'm not gonna make it super detailed. This, the focal point is going to be my wildflowers. So I'm grabbing sap green and lemon yellow deep, and I'm just gonna add this, put it down on my wet bottom half of my paper. Maybe some areas have darker sap green. You don't need to cover the full area. This is just laying down that base color and we're gonna have 
tall flowers on top of it and then thinner, smaller flowers in the distance. So this, the distance, the flowers in the distance are gonna be more out of focus. So this blurry effect is gonna really help add depth to that. But the closer you are to the foreground, the more in focus and the bigger the, the flowers will be. Might also grab just a little tiny bit of opera rose. And again, these flowers in the distance will be blurry. So because we're using wet and wet, maybe some cadmium orange for some other colors. Um, they'll be more blurry and more small. So this is kind of doing that work for me a little bit. And before this dries, I'm gonna grab my toothbrush spare toothbrush that we have and soak it in some alcohol. And I'm just gonna, whoops, all good. Kind of flick it around and mostly in the green area, not so much in the sky. These little white dots are gonna be the stamen of some flowers, maybe some uh, brighter highlight areas on some flowers. I'm probably gonna go over that big circle and make it filled in, but this is just the base layer. So we're gonna wait for this to dry and incorporate the alcohol drops and make it look unique and sprayed and fun. So once this dries, we're gonna add the detail. All right, so wildflower field time. I wanna give it this wind swept um, breeze blowing through the field effect. So I'm gonna have a lot of curving, um, falling over grass and uh, flowers. So I've already got some corners over here or sides over here where flowers will naturally appear and maybe some grass in the middle here and with a few less flowers towards the center. Um, but now that this is dried, I kind of see little dandelion uh, moments with this uh, alcohol and how it's dried. So we might go in and add these as like dandelions, which could be cool, or just kind of like a dancing pollen across the field effect, not sure. But I'm gonna start with the background flowers first. They're gonna be smaller and a little bit fainter um, in the color. And I've got my size two brush to add in the details. I'm gonna start with, these are maybe stock flowers or just some taller um, larkspurs or who knows. I'm gonna start over here. And just kind of adding in some green, some lighter green and then going back in and adding darker green. We're not too detailed back here because it's off in the distance. But picture it like hitting the, the breeze, hitting these flowers and kind of pulling them, swaying them around. So just going between sap green with some lemon yellow deep or sap green just by itself. Adding in some leaves, some tall grass in the back maybe. With some darker color here and there. I'm just going between a variety of hues for both my flowers and my green stems and leaves to make sure it's staying movable and more realistic. And over these lighter background base layers, I'm going to do lighter color on top of it because maybe the light is just hitting differently there or they're just out of focus. Just very faint detail. Just 
So we're working our way down and we're gonna get taller and more detailed. Like little eyelashes and getting a little lighter and more faded towards the center and these lighter areas. Making them kind of splay out. Maybe touching in some cobalt. Letting it interact with the warm colors and it might turn into purple. Just going around with my two size two brush and using the tip of the brush to let it sprinkle in these flowers. But don't be too detailed with this because you're gonna have a, a row of, of flowers up here that are taller and gonna overlap. So these are just background details. I'm just color coming over here and trying to match the depth and pulling out where I see faint hints of flowers and their curves. So now that this left side is coming in, I like how blurry it's looking and in comparison to what's over on the right. So I'm gonna take water and my size two brush, just water on my brush and kind of blend these in a little bit more to blur them in to the background. So not working it in too much, just going over spots here and there so it kind of matches that look. This is what you do with watercolor if you start to like something a little different than how you originally painted it, or you wanna, maybe you messed up. You can kind of erase in a way or smudge. Okay, a little more blurry. So these greens are really helping to add movement, but also when you're going between different hues of greens, like dark green, light green, yellow green, blue green, that makes it feel a little bit more dense and realistic. And there's overlapping stems and leaves. I'm gonna keep it more faint like that and bring down some green down here. Smudging in some flower colors. Keeping it really light. And if it ends up being too dark, then I grab more water and just kind of smudge it around.
Now we're going to start painting the flowers in the foreground and they're gonna be bigger, bolder. If you need practice with painting wildflowers, we have a good video for you, for you that we'll link right here in this video. So make sure you go check it out. Um, but I'm gonna start with maybe doing a black eyed Susan over here in the corner with lemon yellow deep. I'm gonna do some black eyed Susan, some cosmos, maybe some lavender, maybe some wild tulips. I'm gonna always point my petals toward where the center of that wild Susan is or flower. And I'm picturing the bulb of the flower here. Wild Susan. Wild Susan. Point, press, and loop, and maybe that petal is curving downwards and off the page. The thin white space between each petal is, you know, gonna help show that it's not a blob, which is nice. Um, but it shows all the individual petals. Makes it look more like a flower. And while that's still wet, I'm gonna go on top of it. This is my size six brush, by the way, since we're doing bigger flowers. Size six brush with yellow ochre. And I'm going to go to the base or the top area of these petals and just darken them a little bit. And maybe the ends as well for a little contrast. smooth out that a little bit. So I'm grabbing a dry brush and just kind of smudge. Okay, let's do a Cosmo, maybe right here. Grabbing Opera Rose, Burnt Umber, or maybe it's an echinacea flower. Little burnt umber, little lemon yellow deep. And this one's gonna be more like a ballet skirt shape. So it's gonna be less wide with wings like that. And we're gonna be pointing this way. So I'm gonna come up a little higher and overlap this grass area. And point press. Point press. The thicker your mixture of paint to water ratio, the better for these so that they really stand out on top of the background. And then from here, I'm gonna grab Burnt Umber and just a touch of Mars Black. And I'm going to do these little squigglies for the bulb. For the Black Eyed Susan, I'm waiting till the yellow dries because yellow and black Mixing together is not fun. I don't like the look, but I love the way brown and pink blend into each other. So while the, these pink petals are still wet, I don't mind them blending, but for black and yellow, I just would prefer it to be clean. So I'm gonna wait till those yellow petals dry before adding that. Now we can add in some stems and leaves over here before we continue. Getting a really thick mixture of sap green, some Prussian blue, and a touch of Mars black. And then over here.
Not adding tons of leaves yet, because I want to add in more flowers. Let's do some tall stock flowers. I'm going to bring this blue over on the right, and then I'm going to sprinkle it in on the left side too. I don't want just to have blue on the right and not balanced, but grabbing cobalt blue and just adding a touch of Prussian blue to it. And I'm going to do these little blossoms. Point press and loop. Again, the wildflower video we did will help you with painting these. I show you how to paint this exact stock flower or delphinium, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just point press and creating these teardrop shapes that are going to continue to pile up to create a stock flower. Some more cobalt mixtures, some more Prussian blue mixtures to add variety. And it just kind of tapers off like that. And maybe there's some being cut off down here. stem. And then these side stems. Bringing in that blue, squeezing it in here. I'm gonna overlap these flowers a bit. If you're gonna overlap, just make sure your on top mixture of whatever you're painting is thicker and darker paint so it is opaque. Maybe it's curving down. And let's do some tulips, bringing in some brighter pinks, mixing opera rose and cadmium orange together, slightly more opera rose than cadmium orange. These are nice little filler flower that I can just kind of place in. to fill in some blank space, some more pink, some more orange, maybe over here. Just be mindful that if you're getting further away from the foreground, they're gonna be smaller. I wanna add some of these over here on the left. Now let's add in another Cosmo or more yellow, actually. Let's do another Black Eyed Susan. I'm gonna do it in the same kind of position as the first one I did, but pointing in a different direction. So I'm gonna have it go across here. 
I didn't overlap that blue because it would smear around and get into the yellow. So I'm going to have it go behind. Just following that curve. I'm going back in with yellow ochre. And grabbing some stem color. Now we can start adding in more stems. I'm just placing my brush down for adding in little leaf color bits and now I'm going to add in my bulbs for my black eyed Susans. It's going to be like a really dark brown. So just a touch of burnt umber with mostly Mars black. And just dotting around, leaving some gaps of white space in there to add a little highlight. Like so. Then I might go in in this lighter area and just add in some light tall grass. Kind of filling that in and adding more of that windswept feel. Kind of like the flowers are parting on either side. So I don't know how this is going to turn out, but I want like white dots on the blue flowers. So I'm just going to I don't even know if it's coming off. <laughs> oh, it's working a little bit. Might need more alcohol. Might be too dry. not work. There you go. I wasn't sure how the alcohol toothbrush moment was going to play out. That's why I'm always encouraging you guys to try new things, be adventurous, and see what happens. I do really like it for the background. I do. I think it's pretty nice to have these little blurry moments. Uh, didn't quite work for the foreground and that's fine. We like it as is. If you do want to add more pop or detail, maybe uh, with the white details, maybe adding in some white gouache on top of the blue once it dries for a little stamen poppiness um, would be fun, but I'm going to call it as is. I like it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that was helpful for you. If you tried the toothbrush alcohol situation, let me know in the comments, maybe what you would have done differently or what you were hoping would happen, or if it turned out just exactly as you wanted it to, let me know in the comments. Also, if you want further content, more of the generating contents and ad free experience, then hop on over to my Patreon. My Patreon is the place to be. So as always, thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in Patreon and I'll definitely see you in the next video.